Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is going to be a lecture for 15 December 2020. This is based on Unit 98 and 99 from Oxford Practice Grammar. Unit 98 and 99 are based on the pronouns that we discussed in a lecture on Monday. So let's start with our discussion. If you have already attended the previous lecture that was regarding the introduction to the pronouns, you might understand the concept behind I and you. So I is the first person singular, and that is the subject. <coughs> and you is the second person singular and plural, subject and object. What I mean will be clear to you when we study the section B. Let's first look at section A, the meaning of the pronouns. So this is a dialogue between Vicky and Andrew. They are talking about uh, going somewhere. Uh, of course, both of them are not going somewhere together. But uh, Vicky is asking about Rachel because they have a plan. Now, if you notice that Rachel is not present in the dialogue, they are talking about Rachel, but Rachel is not present there. So in this dialogue, there are only two persons, Vicky and Andrew, but they are referring to three people that are not there. That is Rachel, Matthew and Emma. So let's uh, read this dialogue and then a lot of things will be clear to you. Vicky says, hello, Andrew, have you seen Rachel? Now, all the pronouns are in bold. It would be a good idea if you will sit with your book in your hand because uh, you can see that the writing is not quite clear on your screen. Andrew says, I don't think so. No, I haven't seen her today. Vicky says, we are supposed to be going out at half past seven and it's nearly eight now. Andrew says, maybe she's just forgotten. You know, Rachel, Vicky says, we are going out for a meal. Matthew and Emma said they might come too. I hope they haven't gone without me. Now in this dialogue, you can see that you, I, I, her, we, it, she, you, we, they, they and me. They are all in bold. I or me means the speaker and you means the person spoken to. So, so I or me is the first person singular and you is the second person singular. Sometimes as you will read in the section B that you can also be the plural. So we or us means the speaker and someone else. Here we means Vicky and Rachel. He or him means a male person and she or her a female person. Here she means Rachel. It means, a, it means a thing, an action, a situation or an idea. Here it means the time. They, them is the plural of he, she and it and means people or things. Now here in these lines, they are trying to clarify what these pronouns mean in different situations. Now, uh, I or me and we and us are quite common pronouns and uh, I hope that you are quite clear about this concept. But when uh, we are talking about it, it is a pronoun that is often used to refer to the weather or uh, the place or the time. Uh, if you have attended the previous lecture, that is the introduction to pronouns, you might have understood the idea behind there and it. So there is called an expletive. Why? Because uh, there is uh, used where the subject uh, is empty. It means that the sentence is without the subject. Now, it's not necessary that always a person or something is doing the action. The action might be happening on its own, but we need to refer to the action. 
or even if it is not an action we have to give some kind of information now the person who is giving the information uh, it's not necessary to mention that person so for that we use a situation where the uh, communicator it's not necessary that the communicator should be present there and uh, sometimes you do not know that uh, who the communicator is but uh, using there in such situations if you remember the example there is some cake left so you are simply giving an information in this sentence there is some cake left it means that uh, you are not stating who is doing the action or who left the cake if anybody had left the cake then we would have simply mentioned it there but there and it so it also refers to something it can be an action it can be a simple thing or an idea a time a place a situation so it is also performs the function of pronoun and then in case of they or them so when you are collectively talking about the people uh, if they happen to be males or females you refer to them as they they or them we can also use they or them for a person when we don't know if the person is male or female so when you are not sure uh, if the person that you are talking about is male or female then you can use they or them for that person if anyone calls ask them to leave a message so anyone means it can be any person it can be male or female so if anyone calls ask them to leave a message so them uh, here it does not mean more than one person here it means that it can be any person subject and object forms so here in front of you you can see three columns and almost four rows in front of you so they have tried to give you a table here where they want to clarify a few things so first person column so uh, we have uh, two more columns of the singular plural and subject object so let's read it i is the first person subject which is singular you is the second person subject which is singular he she and it are the third person subject and singular so he is the pronoun that is used for the male uh, and she is the pronoun that is used for the female now if uh, you look at the dialogue again then rachel is not present in the dialogue but still they are referring to her so they are using the pronouns such as her and she so uh, let's look at the objects me is the first person object singular you is the second person object singular him her or it is the third person object singular sorry about the noise in the background we is the first person subject plural you is the second person subject plural and they is the third person subject plural us is the first person object plural you is the second person object plural and them is the third person object plural so i me we and us basically i and v i is the singular and v is the plural so i me we and us they are the first person when you are talking about your own self and second person as you can see that you remains the same when you are addressing the person right in front of you uh, even if they happen to be a larger audience or even if that happens to be a singular person you will use you in that situation just like i am now addressing you as you you might be one person watching this uh, uh, lecture or you might be more than one person who is watching this lecture he she it he of course is for the male and she is of course for the female now here uh, let's talk about the object if you remember i told you in the previous lecture on introduction to pronouns where i told you that object is not always the non living thing object hamesha zaruri nahi hai ki koi bejaan cheez ho object basically if you remember 
uh, I told you about the structure of the sentence. The most common structure of a sentence is subject, verb and object. For example, Tom goes to school. Now, Tom goes to school is a very typical example of a very typical sentence. Tom performs an action, goes to is an action and school is the object. Now, school is uh, not exactly an object. It is a place. It is a building. But we can see that Tom is going somewhere. The action is directed from Tom towards the school. So that is why in that sense, we use the object. Let me just, uh, just to remind you here. Let me write it down here. So I told you that in a sentence, we have the S, we have the V and we have the O. Now, this is for the active voice. In case of the passive voice, we, re we reverse this order. We write object, verb, and subject. Now, the, the, basically, the function performed by object remains the same. Let me make this clear through an example. He ate the cake. Now, in this example, he is the subject. It is the verb and the cake is the object. Now here you can see that the action is being performed on something or the action is being transferred to the other noun. This is also a pronoun he or we can substitute it with a name that is Tom. And this is also a noun. He pronoun and this is a noun. So, he is performing an action. This action is affecting another noun, which is the cake. Now, if we reverse this order, the cake was eaten by him. The cake was eaten by him. Now here again, if I tell you that the structure becomes the object, verb and subject, this is of course, the cake is of course the object. And eaten is again the verb and by him. Him is the subject. Now here again the function does not change. Even if we change their places. We brought the cake here and we brought the him. Now him becomes uh, of course is uh, changes according to the voice of the sentence. But again you can see that uh, uh, this sentence also gives the same sense that the action is being performed on the cake. If you try to understand the point here. So, I want to explain here that object is not always an object sometimes. Means it is not always a non-living thing. This means that one noun is performed by the action of another noun. Which affects the other noun. And the direction of the noun is directed. Which noun affects the other noun. We call it object. I hope that this concept is clear. Through this very common example. Let's proceed. We use the object form. Uh, we use the subject form. I etc. When the pronoun is the subject. And there is a verb. I don't think so. Maybe she is, for, she is just forgotten. 
We use the object form me, etc. when the pro pronoun is the object of a verb or preposition. I haven't seen her today. I hope they haven't gone without me. The pronoun on its own or after be usually has the object form. Who spilled the coffee all over the table? Me. Sorry, it was me. Now you can simply answer this question by simply saying me or sorry, it was me. Now they are asking you to compare this answer. Who spilled coffee all over the table? I did. Now there are two ways of answering this question. Up there they have told you that we use the subject form when the pronoun is the subject and there is a verb. So when you want to use a verb, you are going to use, of course, the first person subject here, which is I. So you simply said I did. But if you are simply going to say me, then there won't be any verb after me. There will be a verb before me. अगर ये कॉन्सेप्ट आपको क्लियर नहीं हुआ तो मैं आपको और आसान अल्फाज में एक्सप्लेन कर दूं। द प्रोनाउन ऑन इट्स ओन और आफ्टर बी यूजली हैज द ऑब्जेक्ट फॉर्म सो प्रोनाउन जो है ना अगर अकेले आ रहा है या फिर आफ्टर बी नाउ इफ इन वन ऑफ द लेक्चर्स आई टोल्ड यू दैट बी इज द वेरी बेसिक फॉर्म ऑफ ऑल द हेल्पिंग वर्ब्स सो बी यहाँ पर उसी को ही रिफर करके कहा जा रहा है अगर आपसे कहा जाए सॉरी इट वाज मी तो यहाँ मी जो है ना वो ऑब्जेक्ट बन जाएगा ठीक है uh, यानी कि आपको जो ऊपर लिस्ट दी हुई है ऑब्जेक्ट्स में से ये उसमें से आएगा तो नॉर्मली जब आप मी यूज करते हैं तो आप उससे पहले हेल्पिंग वर्ब लगाते हैं इट वाज मी लेकिन जब आप आए या वी यूज करेंगे तो उसके बाद आप हेल्पिंग वर्ब लगाएंगे यानी कि वर्ब की पोजिशनिंग का आपको ख्याल रखना पड़ेगा Section C, you, one and they. We can use you or one to mean any person or people and in general, including the speaker. You shouldn't believe what you read in the newspapers. Now they are talking here very generally. They are not, uh, uh, what they have said here is that when you are saying that we 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 are not exactly telling someone to do something. We are actually just using it just to refer to anyone, just to give out an idea. जब हम किसी को खास तौर पर address नहीं कर रहे होते, तो फिर हम you use कर सकते हैं. You जो है ना वो किसी भी गायब बाना के बंदे के लिए भी इस्तेमाल हो सकता है. या फिर आप larger audience को address कर रहे हैं, उनके लिए भी you use कर सकते हैं. Single person जो सामने बैठा है, अगर आप उसी से directly बात कर रहे हैं, तो उसके लिए भी you use कर सकते हैं. Or one shouldn't believe what one reads in the newspaper. Now, in a proper English, in proper English, the expression one is used. When you are talking about just anyone, जब आप किसी के भी बारे में बात कर रहे होते हैं, तो आप ये word one use करते हैं. You जो है, वो अब ज़्यादा करंट ज़माने के हिसाब से, प्रेजेंट टाइम्स के हिसाब से, you use होने लग गया है. लेकिन one जो है, वो ज़्यादा proper English expression है. You don't like, one doesn't like to have an argument in public. Now, uh, you are talking just generally about anyone. Ke kisi ko bhi pasand nahi hota. Isko hum one ki jaga anyone bhi keh sakte hain. Or no one bhi keh sakte hain. No one doesn't like to have an argument in public. You is normal in conversation. One is more formal. So I told you that in proper English, one zada jo hai wo use hota hai. Proper English. By that I meant that informal form of English. We can use they for other people in general. They say too much sugar is bad for you. They say. Now they yaha par refer kiya ja raha hai to the group of scientists. To isi liye they kya ke use kar diya gaya. Basically pronouns save us. From using a lot of words, या फिर economy of words के लिए pronouns हमें काफी ज़्यादा help करते हैं. We can also use it for people in authority. They are going to build a new swimming pool here. So they का मतलब यहाँ पर है the people who are in authority, who have the power to do so, जो authorized हैं, तो वो ऐसा कर रहे हैं. Uh, they is informal and conversational. We use the passive in more formal situations. A new swimming pool is going to be built here. 
तो नॉर्मली जब आप बहुत फॉर्मली बात कर रहे होते हैं तो आप पैसिव जो वॉइस का स्ट्रक्चर है वो यूज करते हैं आई हैव ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड अ लेक्चर ऑन एक्टिव एंड पैसिव ऑन माय यूट्यूब चैनल इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन जस्ट वॉचिंग इट जस्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ सम एक्स्ट्रा नॉलेज देन यू कैन वॉच इट ऑफकोर्स यू विल लर्न समथिंग फ्रॉम इट सो लेट्स प्रोसीड टू आर एक्सरसाइजेज नाउ So let's do exercise number three. Subject and object forms. Put in the pronoun. So they are asking you to use the pronouns here. There is no need to shout. I can hear you. For an exemplary uh, uh, sentence has been done for you here. Number one. You and I work well together. We are a good team. You and I work well together. Now from if you are, they are saying you and I. You and I means more than one person, so it should be plural. And then plural, uh, action, plural people are performing an action. It means that it is a subject. So here we are going to use we. We are a good team. Number two, we have got a bit of problem. Could dash help dash please? We have got a bit of problem. तो किसी को ये बताया जा रहा है कि हमें कोई मसला आ गया है तो आगे मदद मांगी जा रही है दूसरे से अपने लिए मदद मांगी जा रही है अब अपना सिंगुलर है या प्लूरल यू कैन गेट द हिंट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द सेंटेंस वी सो कुड यू हेल्प अस प्लीज नंबर थ्री दिस इज अ गुड फोटो इज इंट डैश दिस इज अ गुड फोटो नाउ दिस Uh, मैंने दिस और दैट का आपको फर्क बताया था कि दिस मीन्स समथिंग दैट इज वेरी क्लोज टू आस तो इसलिए आप उसके लिए दिस यूज करेंगे अब एक फोटो है इट इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट तो आप उसको यूज करके इट uh, यूज करेंगे इज इंट इट इज जैसे का इन डैश इन इट फोटो के बारे में बात की जा रही है कि क्या जैसे का फोटो में मौजूद है इज जैसे का इन इट येस दैट हर लुक She is next to Andrew. Yes, that's her. Look, she is next to Andrew. क्या इसमें जैसिका है अब इस बात के दौरान जैसिका वहां उस सिचुएशन में मौजूद नहीं है लेकिन पिक्चर में जैसिका है तो उसके बारे में कहा जा रहा है हाँ वही है जैसिका इज द नेम ऑफ अ फीमेल सो वी आर गोइंग टू यूज थर्ड पर्सन सिंगुलर हेयर दैट इज हर शी जैसिका ऑफकोर्स अगेन इज अ फीमेल और हम उसको रिफर कर रहे हैं थर्ड पर्सन सिंगुलर तो शी पहले में ऑब्जेक्ट आया हर और दूसरे में सब्जेक्ट आया शी नंबर फोर हु डिड दिस क्रॉसवर्ड ये क्रॉसवर्ड पजल किसने किया है मी अब मी जो है ना वो आपका हो जाएगा फर्स्ट पर्सन सिंगुलर ऑब्जेक्ट मी अब मी ही अगर आप कह दें तो उसके बाद आपको कोई हेल्पिंग वर्ब लगाने की जरूरत नहीं है फुल स्टॉप आ गया उसके बाद आया आई डिड इट दिस मॉर्निंग आई डिड ठीक है आई डिड इट इट कौन है क्रॉसवर्ड है नंबर फाइव इज दिस विकी इज बैग क्या ये विकी का बैग है नो शी डेंट ब्रिंग वन इट कैंट बिलोंग टू हर शी Didn't bring one. यहाँ पर she से आप अंदाजा लगाए कि डूअर ऑफ द परफॉर्मर ऑफ द एक्शन है तो यहाँ पर she जो है थर्ड पर्सन सिंगुलर सब्जेक्ट है इट कैंट बिलोंग टू हर नाउ इट इज बींग रिफर टू द बैग ठीक है और किसकी बिलोंगिंग में है तो यहाँ पर हम हर यूज करेंगे हर इज द थर्ड पर्सन ऑब्जेक्ट हियर अच्छा नंबर सिक्स आई आई एम लुकिंग फॉर माई शूज आई एम यहाँ आय लगाएंगे हैव डैश सीन देम हैव यू सीन देम यस दे आर हियर तो दूसरे ने जवाब दिया यस दे आर हियर ये शूज के बारे में बात हो रही है लेट्स लुक एट एक्सरसाइज नंबर फोर कंप्लीट द कॉन्वर्सेशन पुट इन यू और दे ट्रेवर सेज आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू ड्राइव इन दिस वेदर इट्स टू आई सी लॉरा सेज यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू टेक एनी रिस्क You can't be too careful. You generally बात कर रही है इसलिए you लगाया you can't be too careful. Trevor, 
I've just heard the weather forecast and they say they are going to there's going to be more snow. You are better off indoor in weather like this. Laura, I think they ought to clear the snow off the roads more quickly. So in these blanks, I'm going to repeat myself. We are going to use you, they, you and they. So in unit 99, we are going to discuss about there and it. If you have attended the introductory lecture to the pronouns, then the concept of there and it might be clear to you. There plus B. So uh, let me repeat myself that B here means the, base, the very basic form of the helping verb. So when we are referring to the helping verbs, we refer to their very basic form, which is B. Look at these examples. I really ought to phone home. Mujhe ghar call karna hai. Well, there's a phone box round the corner. There's a phone box round the corner. Now, here, just pay attention that uh, we use there in the situations where we don't want to mention or we are not sure about who the performer of the action is or we are just referring to some kind of phenomenon. अब किसी प्रोसेस को किसी चीज को किसी सिचुएशन को किसी टाइम को किसी प्लेस को किसी जगह को किसी इंटेंशन को ये तमाम चीजें जिनको करने वाला कोई नहीं होता बट दे जस्ट एग्जिस्ट सो समथिंग दैट जस्ट एग्जिस्ट एंड व्हेन यू आर जस्ट रिफरिंग टू इट तो उसके लिए आप दे आर यूज करते हैं वेल देर इज अ फोन बॉक्स राउंड द कॉर्नर कुड आई मेक माई सेल्फ एन ऑमलेट ऑफकोर्स There are some eggs in the fridge. कोई चीज है कोई चीज एग्जिस्ट कर रही है और वो क्या है एग्स है सो देर आर सम एग्स इन द फ्रिज देर इज एन इम्पोर्टेंट मैसेज मीटिंग एट वर्क दैट आई हैव टू गो टू मेरे ऑफिस में एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट मीटिंग है अब वो मीटिंग अगर कर रही है वो मीटिंग इट इट इज दैट मीटिंग इज टेकिंग प्लेस सो दैट इज वाई वी विल रिफर टू इट एज देयर नाउ इन ऑल दीज एग्जाम्पल्स यू शुड नोट दैट इट इज रिफरिंग टू जस्ट द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ थिंग्स समथिंग दैट इज लाइंग समवेयर समथिंग दैट इज जस्ट प्रेजेंट समवेयर समथिंग दैट जस्ट एग्जिस्ट सो वेन यू आर जस्ट रिफरिंग टू ऑल दीज थिंग्स यू यूज द प्रोनाउन देयर to talk about the existence of something we use there plus be so here we are that was the point that i was telling you about to talk about the existence of something we use there plus be and i like i told you be is the very bas basic form of the helping verb we usually pronounce there like the there's is theirs and there are is theirs B agrees with the following noun. So they have given you a hint regarding uh, the pronunciation. Of course, we cannot be quite as good as the natives. We can only try to be good uh, just as the natives are. There is a phone box, but there are some eggs. So when you are, even when you are using there, you have to be very careful about the plural and the singular that we talked about in our previous lectures regarding the singular and the countable and the uncountable nouns. So there is a phone box. There are some eggs. So even when you are using there, you have to be quite careful about uh, the nouns if they are singular if they are plural if they are countable if they are uncountable so you use the helping verb accordingly here are some more examples there's a bus at 10 to 5 there so here there is an apostrophe s here so it means there is there's means there is there's a bus at 10 to 5 there will be a meal waiting for us there will be means there will be is there a toilet in the building now you can see here that is is used here because this person is asking about a single toilet were there any bargains in the sale bargain bhavtao karna to yahan par jo bhavtao hai wo of course plural mein hoga isliye yahan uske sath aap were use karenge 
सो so, आपने अपना हेल्पिंग वर्ब बेशक आप देयर यूज कर रहे हैं देयर को आप प्लूरलाइज नहीं कर सकते लेकिन आपका जो हेल्पिंग वर्ब है वो आपके नाउन के हिसाब से आना चाहिए नाउन सिंगुलर है तो हेल्पिंग वर्ब इज नाउन प्लूरल है तो हेल्पिंग वर्ब आर पास्ट में है तो सिंगुलर है तो वॉज और पास्ट में है प्लूरल में है तो वर सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ There have been some burglaries recently. Now here you can see that burglaries is in plural. So you use the present perfect tense here. There have been some burglaries recently. There might have been an accident. Now accident, of course, is beginning with a vowel sound a. So that is why, and it is a singular accident. So we use the singular plural uh, pronoun. Uh, sorry article which is an there might have been an accident we also use there with words like a lot of many much more enough and with numbers there were a lot of problems to discuss there's too much noise in here will there be enough chairs there are 30 days in april now pehla jo example hai there were a lot of problems to discuss there were अब वर्ड से आपको पता चला पास्ट है प्रॉब्लम्स प्लूरल है इसलिए वर यूज हुआ अ लॉट ऑफ मीन्स बहुत ढेर सारी जिन्हें काउंट नहीं किया जा सकता सो फॉर समाइम्स फॉर सम अनकाउंटेबल थिंग्स यू यूज द एक्सप्रेशन अ लॉट ऑफ या मेनी और क्वांटिफाइबल है तो मच में भी कर सकते हैं देर इज टू मच नॉइज इन हेयर नाउ नॉइज इज एन अनकाउंटेबल नाउ ठीक है इसलिए आपने मच यूज किया अब मच कितना था टू मच था ठीक है फिर आपने देर्स सो ये अनकाउंटेबल है इसीलिए सॉर्ट ऑफ आप कह लें कि कलेक्टिव एंटिटी में नॉइज यूज होता है तो इसीलिए आपने इज यूज किया है देर इज टू मच नॉइज इन हियर विल देयर बी इनफ चेयर्स सो ये फ्यूचर के हवाले से बात पूछी जा रही है क्या चेयर्स जो है वो होंगी काफी होंगी काफी मीन्स इनफ just to uh, just according to the requirement of the gathering there are 30 days in april so ye aapko wo ek uh, universal truth bata rahe hain ki april mein 30 days hote hain and universal truth is always in the present let's look at b uses of it so it ko hum pichle unit mein bhi kafi discussion kar chuke hain and even in the introductory lecture so i hope the usage of it is not new to you we use it for a thing an action a situation or an idea you've bought a new coat it's very nice skiing is an expensive hobby isn't it you have to fill in all these stupid forms it's ridiculous i find astrology fascinating i'm really interested in it so you are talking about in the first example about an object which is a coat in the second is a sport in the third uh, again uh, it is an object the forms and then in the fourth it is a field of study which is astrology so ye mukhtalif jo hai wo koi field hai koi subject hai koi jo hai na wo uh, object hai theek hai by the subject i mean uh, field of study ऑब्जेक्ट आपका कोट हो गया स्कीइंग आपका स्पोर्ट हो गया तो uh, इन सब को आप इट कह कर रेफर करेंगे इवन अगर एनिमल्स होंगे तो उनको भी आप इट कह के रेफर करेंगे वी यूज इट टू मीन द अनोन पर्सन नाउ इट कैन आल्सो बी यूज टू रेफर टू समवन हु इज नॉट नोन टू यू डिड समवन रिंग इट वाज विकी कौन था विकी थी डिड समवन रिंग क्या किसी ने कॉल किया इट वाज विकी और यू कैन सिंपली से विकी कॉल्ड शी जस्ट कॉल्ड टू से शी इज अराइव सेफली we use it for the time the weather and distance so ye bada ek common sa mistake hota hai i remember that uh, a few years back one of my students asked me how do you refer to the weather and i asked my student uh, what do you mean by that and my student told me that one of uh, uh, his teachers was saying that the rain is falling so uh, that was quite a uh, very uh incorrect thing to refer to that was quite an incorrect way to refer to the weather you always refer to the weather as it for example it is raining it is snow falling it is hailing so it's half past 5 already it's uh, there on your book 
So here uh, they are referring to the time. It's uh, half past five already. It means that it's 5.30 already. It's Sunday tomorrow. Ab din ke baare mein baat ho rahi hai, to kal Sunday hoga. It was much kal Sunday nahi hai. Please don't be mistaken. It's just in the example. It's Wednesday tomorrow. It was much warmer yesterday. It's 50 miles from here to Brighton. We also use it in it in structures with a to infinitive or a that clause. So infinitive is the basic form of the verb, which uh, we call the first form of the verb. First form of the verb. In the previous unit, when I wrote that uh, he ate the cake, the first form of ate would be eat. So eat would be known as the infinitive form. Eat, ate and eaten. So we do first, second, third form. Hum isko karte hai. So basically, jo eat is infinitive. Ke ke refer karenge. So infinitive is basically the very basic form of the verb. Basic form means that there is no change in it and it is in its original halat mein present ho verb. So it was nice to meet your friends. Now in this example, you can see that it was nice to meet meet now meet ki past tense form or past participle hai meet or met and met yani ke meet is the first form meet ko hi hum infinitive kahenge because uh, isme koi change nahi aaya so it jo hai un structures mein bhi use hota hai uh, jahan par to ke sath verb ka first form aata hai yani ke infinitive hota hai aur a that clause it was nice to meet your friends it would be a good idea to book in advance. It's important to switch off the electricity. It's a pity that you can't come with us. So that can be used here or cannot be used here. Ye apni marzi par depend karta hai. Acha. Uh, lekin aap aage clause dekhe. It's a pity you can't come with us. So that ke baad aane wala jo clause hai. Uske saath bhi it aksar use hota hai. This is much more usual than, for example, to meet your friends was nice. There or it. Now, section C discusses if we use there, uh, if we should use there or if we should use it. We often use there when we mention something for the first time, like the picture in this example. There was a picture on the wall. Now, here they are clarifying to you that... Uh, where you should uh, use there instead of it uh, or in what kind of situations there can be used so there can be used in the situations when you are talking about something introducing something uh, for the first time there was a picture on the wall now uh, let's imagine that a sentence uh, or a paragraph has started and in that paragraph they are talking about some kind of picture so uh, this is the very uh, consider it a very initial sentence of that paragraph and that paragraph talks about a specific picture so just to introduce that they are talking about a picture uh, they have used there here there was a picture on the wall it was an abstract painting we use it when we talk about the details it means the picture here are some more examples there's a woman at the door there's a woman at the door now woman talking they are talking about the woman for the first time that is why they have used there here oh it's aunt yon or it's aunt yon there was a dog in the field it was a big black one so it refers to the same dog that they have introduced in the first place. There's a new one-way traffic system in the town center. Uh, so again, they are talking about the one-way traffic system for the first time. And then they are referring to it as it. It's very confusing. So let's do question number four together or for unit 99 there or it put in there or it so you have to just analyze here whether you should use there or it in the given blanks is it the 15th today 
no the 16th number 1 the road is closed dash been an accident so there's been an accident why because they are giving you an information about the accident they are telling you about the accident for the first time yahan pehli baar accident ka zikr ho raha hai is wajah se yahan unhone there use kiya so you will use there apostrophe has already yahan maujood hai warna ye pura likha jata there has been an accident number 2 Take a taxi dash a long way to the station. Take a taxi. क्यों? Station तक जाने के लिए लंबा रास्ता है. It's a long way to the station. Number three. Dash was a motorbike outside. There was a motorbike outside. Dash looked very expensive. It looked very expensive. Now motorbike. has been introduced in this sentence for the first time so we will use there and in the second sentence of number 3 we will use it second blank of number 3 we will use it number 4 will dash be any delays because of the strike will there be any delays because of the strike well it would be a good idea to ring the airline and check number 5 dash was wet and dash was a cold east wind it was wet weather ki baat ho rahi hai ke sab kuch geela tha yani ke barish hui thi so it was wet and there was a cold east wind dash was after midnight and then dash were few people on the street it was after midnight again they are referring to the time pehle sentence mein weather ko refer kiya isliye wahan it use hua dusre sentence mein टाइम को रिफर किया इसलिए कहा इट वॉज आफ्टर मिड नाइट एंड देर व फ्यू पीपल ऑन द स्ट्रीट सो इट वुड बी अ गुड आइडिया इफ यू नोट डाउन योर होमवर्क हेयर फ्रॉम यूनिट नाइनटी एट यू हैव टू डू एक्सरसाइज वन एंड टू एंड फ्रॉम यूनिट नाइनटी नाइन you have to practice exercise 1 2 and 3 at home i hope that the concept of uh, these pronouns there and it and i and you are clear to you so uh, if they are not then it would be a good idea to just go through the introductory lecture to pronouns once again so in uh, tomorrow's lecture we are going to discuss uh unit 100 and 101 that is the reflexive pronouns and uh emphatic pronouns and each other so that's it for today your class has formally ended see you tomorrow inshallah allah hafiz